Okay, uh, let's get into the papers now and take a look at uh, some of the headlines across uh, newspapers in Nigeria. And I have with me in the studio uh, our analyst, Obani Akinwale. Good morning, me. My pleasure. Nice Good to morning. see you. See you. Exactly. And then we have uh, a political technocrat, Dr. Dio Coyote, joining us on Skype. Uh, Dr. Coyote, good morning. It's a long time. Good to see you after uh, a little while. <laughs> oh, Mike, how are you? Nice hearing your voice this morning. Exactly. Nice to see you. Okay, let, then let's start nah. from Daily Times newspaper now. Uh, suspicion trails death of a celebrated female pilot. Uh, this has really uh, been in the minds of a lot. So many Nigerians been reacting to the death of uh, uh, flight officer uh, Arotile. Okay, uh, from there, let's go to, to the Blueprint newspaper. Attention, uh, CNA Omo Lori uh, dares National Assembly over SAC and directs 149 affected staff to ignore orders and says commission lacks power to sack him. Okay, uh, that's the Blueprint. Uh, News Direct is next now and uh, is focusing on the EFCC. Magu out of detention as EFCC suspends 12 directors. And, and the invite was in his best interest. Additional is saying this. Okay, that's the uh, presidential spokesperson. Uh, All right. Daily Trust newspaper is next. Farmers, small businesses get CBN's interest-free loans. And it will allow Muslims to take facilities, Dr. Uh, Bashir is saying this. And uh, selection must be transparent. And beneficiaries are saying this. And analysts hail uh, measures. Okay, farmers, small-scale businesses get CBN's interest-free loans. Okay, from there, let's go to the national economy. National economy is next now, and it says uh, demographic, demographic advantage to position Nigeria as global economic powerhouse, as a report is saying this, and says uh, Nigeria, United States, China, India to be dominant economic powers because of their demographic uh, advantage. A massive investment in education, digital technology, a must. Experts are trying to, uh, uh, trying to advise in here. And I guess this topic will interest my guests to talk about when uh, the discussions open in, in, a, in a little bit. Okay, from there, let's go to the leadership newspaper, which is the last one we're looking at now. Tension in EFCC as PMB suspends 12 directors. As President Muhammad Buhari, Magu regains freedom after 10 days in police custody. Rights panel demands charge sheet and copy of Malami's memo. Youth Council backs President's anti-graft war. Okay, all of those on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Okay, now let's uh, get to the paper, the national economy. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Coyote, I'm going to start with you on this. Uh, the national economy says that demographic advantage is to position Nigeria as a global uh, powerhouse. Uh, that's a, according to a report by the Lancet Medical Journal of the United Kingdom. I, I wonder what you make of uh, this because the, the world commemorated World Population Day just uh, uh, a couple of days ago and the, the attention was brought to the fore as regarding uh, how, how exponential the, the, the population of Nigeria is growing because by 2050 it is projected that Nigeria will be the third most populate, uh, populated country in the world after China and India. And by 2100, Nigeria will be the second most populated country in the world after India. I wonder what you make of all of this, uh, if, if you an analyze and assess where we are going and how we're taking these steps towards uh, making our population a, a, a powerful one. Yeah, uh, Mike, uh, once again, good morning, long time. You see, it is very, very uh, <clears throat> uh, funny that between you and me, I don't think we even know what the demographic characteristics of Nigeria is. I mean, do we, do we even understand what demographic characteristic is? We have a very skewed demographic characteristic in this country. Let me give you an example. If you all over the world, all over the world, when you go to, when, when you try to study the population of uh, the desert areas, the semi-arid areas, and then uh, savanna, then down to where you have the uh, coastal line, 
you have the population bigger, higher in areas where you have the coastal lines, then to Savannah, then to Hari before you get to uh, 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 the desert. Or like here in Nigeria, the opposite is the, is, is the other way around here in Nigeria. How can you be telling me that the population of uh, 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 the desert, northern area, like uh, Kaduna, Sokoto, and the like, is greater than that of Lagos? Yeah, but Dr. So Kayode, is, Dr. Kayode, the, the point there is, if we are talking about the number of, uh, of the population in states, is that as important as, as the population of Nigeria as a whole? Because we are all treated as one. When, when the plans are being made, when the projections say, are I'm being made, there, it is planned for all of Nigerians, irrespective of where yes. you reside. The essence of what I'm saying here is we don't know what our population is. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Some figures have been inflated unnecessarily. And well, the, the National so, Population so Commission, so the National ago. Population Commission that works hand in hand with uh, the UNFPA, all have a projection that tally here and there, just with with uh, little variation in, uh, in the little figure here and there. The, for for now, the, they are the authority. So, uh, if we're planning, would it not just be right to plan based on what they have? Because if what? we have to be very uh, 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 accurate, I, I believe no country actually has a 100% watertight accurate uh, uh, figures of demography in their country. When you are talking of accuracy that we cannot have, uh, yes, it's true, but the degree of freedom sh should, not be up to, should not be up to 0.5. All right. The moment is not getting to one. What I'm telling you is the projection they are making, they are making all those projections based on faulty population. That's what I'm saying. All we right, still don't Cardi. know the normal population of Nigeria for us to make proper projection. Okay, Kyrie, I'm going to come back to you on this so we can uh, get your perspective and other sides of what, of uh, the point you are making. But let me bring in uh, okay. Obani into this discussion now. Now, this projection is saying that Nigeria will be a regional powerhouse because of the demography. The point is we have been a, a regional powerhouse before in the 60s and 70s and maybe in the early 80s. Uh, we lost that that. Uh, a position one way or the other, although we're still the giant of Africa. But when it comes to being a powerhouse, is it just the demography that makes one a powerhouse? Yeah. Traditionally, the law of demand and supply always look at, do you have the uh, propensity to consume what mm. you are producing? And you look at your neighboring countries, what are they producing? What is their strength? What is the custom union? Uh, what are the modality of businesses? What are the trade-offs you can have? Uh, looking at where Nigeria is positioned in terms of population, we're meant to understand that we have about 200 million, mm. which traditionally shows that if we are producing what we are consuming, we're supposed to be a productive economy. Mm. Statistically, looking at that figure, we are put at advantage whereby we determine what happened within, <coughs> our within our surroundings. Take, for instance, the population of Ghana is about 33 million, mm. whereas Lagos is expected to be around 25 million mm. this year. So you look at it that whatever total production of Ghana in terms of consumption would be is what Lagos state exactly. would take as a, as mm -hmm. a state in a 36 state country. Or look at Kano as well, population of about 18 million when you compare to population of Togo and Benin Republic. Mm -hmm. So looking at that, if Nigeria is a productive economy, not a consuming economy, we are bound to be a productive economy. But unfortunately, the country has been redoed with uh, the kind of leadership we have. Uh, when we got our independence in 1960, we were told we are a nascent country. In, 2000, in 1999, we said we are a nascent democracy. Mm -hmm. For 60 years here we are, we are still consuming the economy, we are still grappling with corruption, with bad leadership. Like my colleague said earlier, either we like it or not, uh, in, the, in the western part of the country or the southern part of the country, we encourage what they call family planning, uh, child spacing. But if you go sincerely to the northern part of the country, discover that there is nothing called family planning. Then even for them to do polio vaccine, the headmaster have to get involved. So traditionally, that would like it or not, they seem to have that number because one allergy can have 20 wives, you can create a hut, we have four children. If you have that in, in, the, in the southern part, is that you are seen as an illiterate or you don't know what you are doing. And you remember one member of the House of, of Representatives, Honorable Adodogo, who said he married the fifth wife and is doing regularly with them. I don't expect any Honorable in the southwest or in the south-south or the southeast to come to TV and say he has this number of wives and he services them regularly. So 
if by, by what is expected from demography, given your population distribution and your production capacity, we were supposed to be uh, the, the, a powerhouse, even not only in the region, globally, because we have the population, and again, we have the productive population of youth, but leadership, corruption, system of governance, faulty constitutional setup, faulty parliamentarian setup, uh, a, a, a non-manufacturing economy, non-industrial economy, we are grappling with all that, and again, it's just like what they call it, a, a camp they call big for nothing. So Nigeria has the population, but as we speak now, the current population of demographic distribution is, a, is as good as what we call big for nothing. So if we continue to chunk out this number of population, the demographic statistics, yes, we have the number, but we continue to, to be programmed to the country. For example, MBS told us that currently, out of the 200 million, you have about 33 million jobless. Mm. You have about 84 million below the poverty line. Mm. So what it means is that by the time we double our population, we should expect that it's going to be a progressive increase in terms of people that are going to be impoverished and poverty rate is going to increase. What is our HDI? What is our FDI? What, what are we talking about? What are the indices that gives us the idea that we'll be powerful in terms of population mm. or voting strength? But in terms of policy making, determining what happens, you can imagine if a Ghanaian can walk into the Nigerian embassy in just a neighboring and destroy the Nigerian embassy. You could imagine what happened to Nigeria in China, and we could not do the same thing to China. Even here in Nigeria, you have areas whereby Nigerians cannot enter the restaurant. So why do we keep fooling ourselves that with these statistics, we are bound to be a global power? In terms of population, yes, but in terms of real power, okay. we will not. All right. All right, let's head straight to the papers now, and I begin with the Daily Times. Suspicion trails death of celebrated female pilot. To the blueprint now, tension as CNA Omolori dares National Assembly over SAC uh, directs 149 affected staff to ignore others. Says commission kicks part to SAC, lacks uh, power to sack him. And to the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, Magu out of detention as EFCC suspends uh, 12 directors. Uh, the invite was in his best interest. Additional, I'm certain my guest will be interested in looking at this story uh, later when we begin our discussion. And now to the front page of the Daily Trust. Farmers, small businesses get CBN's interest-free loans. It's, it will allow Muslims to take facilities, Dr. Bashir. Selection must be transparent. Beneficiaries, analysts, hail measures. And on the front page of the national economy, demographic advantage to position Nigeria as global economic powerhouse report. Nigeria, US, China, India to be dominant economic powers. Massive investment in education, digital e technology, a must. Experts. And to the front page of the leadership newspaper, tension in EFCC, as uh, President Muhammad Buhari suspends two of the rectors, Magu regains freedom after then 10 days in police custody. Rights panel demands charge sheet, copy of Malami's memo, Youth Council backs President's anti graft war. And uh, Ni, I'm certain you'll be interested in this uh, stories <coughs> that have to do with uh, Magu being out of uh, detention after 10 days. And he is requesting for the chat sheet, copy of Malami's memo. He's opening his defense today. Uh, according to George Orwell in his book, Twelfth Night, he said, all animals are equal, but some are more equal. And that is the case of Mr. Malami writing a petition or submitting a petition against the person of Mr. As Commissioner of Police, Mago. Uh, it's, 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 I'm still asking myself uh, some questions like, if Mr. Mago and the EFCC is under presidency, why is it that is the is it a spokesperson for Minister for Justice and Antonio at the Federation, the Federation yeah. that was giving us that Mr. Magu was detained and was to be interviewed by a presidential panel. Uh, again, so uh, Mr. Magu, Mr. Magu himself, like uh, Vice President Van, you said a couple of days ago, he said, uh, if we're not careful the way we are fighting the corruption, everybody will be weary and the corruption will come back. Mm. I see no reason why Mr. Magu should be trying secrecy. After all, whatever AFC have been doing, why is it difficult to put 
what are the issues that you have asked Mr. Magu on the front burner and let people come and substantiate so, the, so the are claim. you saying that uh, as uh, some reports or some persons are saying that perhaps uh, this is just a pawn for some persons to take over the the commission uh, for their own selfish gains it, it's obvious when mr obla the former presidential recovery committee was, was said of having fake documents and what have you was made public what is the issue with mago and i keep saying it if we are not careful in this country if we continue with this set of leadership they are going to take this country to where we don't expect. The politics of Magu is the politics of 2023. The politics of Magu is politics of what happened during uh, former uh, Attorney General Federation and Doaka, they took over the presidency. The, pro the politics of Magu is the likes of, uh, they call him chief priest of CPC, in person of uh, the Attorney General Federation, Mr. Malami, trying to take over the control of power. You ask yourself, where was Mr. Malami when Abba Kiari was the chief of staff? So these are some of the things that we are asking ourselves. If Mr. Magu has truly violated his code of conduct as a public officer, let him be, tri be tried by a uh, code of conduct public tribunal or let him be tried in the public. Why will a member of the presidency write against uh, another appointee of the president? And at the same time, why is it that the DSS, the, the, the secret services, they are always after this Magu, Magu, uh, but, Magu. But if I will Magu. take you back a bit, uh, some persons have said that perhaps that while Abakari was alive, he was trying to protect uh, Magu at the time. Abakari was not protecting Magu, and that's why we said the presidency has to clearly state what are individual roles. And again, it boils down to our constitution. We can't lump Ministry of Justice and Antony General together. If you are the chief prosecutor for the, for the government, that doesn't make you infallible. Mr. Malami, yes, he has a right to advise the presidency when it comes to legal matters and legal jurisprudence, being the Minister for Justice. But you ask yourself, why don't you put this, in, in these issues at the front burner? Mm -hmm. Then you yourself, how many court orders have been issued by, federal, by various courts that you have refused to comply with as the chief law officer of the country? Who has come ahead to try you for violating those laws? Has MBA come out to say, as a senior lawyer, as a son, you have done X, Y, Z? In the presidency itself, what are the judge? For example, let's look at the case of PID that is just rearing its head. Mm. What were your roles as the chief law officer of the country? Why are we looking at all this? What about the memo that just came out that the Attorney General of the Federation is the one asking for them to dispense uh, some vessels on the oil? Is that the, the function of Attorney General of the Federation? Mm. When does it turn to the BPE man? When does it turn to the cost of man? When is he Minister of Finance? Mm. So these are questions that we're asking ourselves. Why is everybody on this Magu, Magu, Magu case? If Magu has truly stolen, don't try him behind bars. And you know, God, this government has a way of legalizing. In the open. This government has a way of legalizing some illegal things. You know the credibility of person of Ayo Salami. And you know everybody knows that that is a no-nonsense person. Now to, to ride on this credibility to rubbish the person of Magu. See, we are lay presidents. Whoever is coming to take over in EFCC, there are two things we'll be looking after. Mm. Don't cross the cabas knows those to probe and don't talk. For example, IGP is saying anybody that becomes the CP, the EFCC boss does not listen, does so, not so come to police meetings. So what does this say of our fight against corruption? Like, uh, like, uh, like uh, is it, is it or now or Shil Sonny said, we are, the one we are doing now, some of us that were ill as before, we are announcing that we are deodorizing corruption. Hmm. So before the, the, what we are seeing when we see the Farida Waziri recovery, Lamudi recovery is that they are, in, they are using disinfectants. But these days, instead of us to now look for something that has high power, to either the contaminator fumigate, we are not using deodorizers to spray perfume to make corruption smells good. Or once you are connected to a person in power, once you are said to be corrupt, once they pray, press the spray of carbon on your body, you are seen as not being corrupt. Or the anti-corruption scissors are now seen as scapegoats. So if you have the guts to say you want to fight corruption, because you keep asking ourselves, what is happening at the presidency? Who is controlling this country? Mr. President asked the panel to interview Magu. Yet, the Attorney General spokesperson is the one coming to us that this is what he was done. Uncle Femi Adesina was on there yesterday, he was saying it was to, to make Magu a clean person. Who does that? How do you come to the world and be telling people what you're not supposed to listen to? So the, the, the case of fighting corruption, whoever is going to come into ESCC now, he knows that he has a date with the Kabars. And really? the Kaba is always about 2023. We all know we are not babies in this country. And by the time you hit up the polity, uh, if, you, uh, if you pull a string, the string pull another string, and we would now begin to run up, 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 up,
let us see the, the substances in the issues of Mr. Magu. And you see, for example, you said there are about 12 directors suspended yes. at, uh, at, uh, at uh, EFCC. EFCC. So you ask yourself, if we are, we are removing, uh, like the Nigerian police, once this IG leaves, if you are going to approach an AIG again, every resource person we have at that CADA, you fire them and bring in new bricks. Yet, the presidency do not look at how do we rejig our security apparatus. But it is Mr. Magu that is our concern uh, of Perhaps interest. the government, the president is taking it one step at a time. Oh, so that is why we keep having the banditry, we keep having the Boko Haram, even attacking as far as Meduguri, and yet we are extending the tenure of chief the of defense staff. But you saw the report of the redeployment of some, of some security officials. You saw the redeployment. The deployment of, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a normal thing. When Lamidi, had, Lamidi the former of Rijalavi Adule, came out and said, the guys don't have equipment, they are fighting with their blood and there's nothing for them. Mr. Uh, Buratai removed him and took him to the, to, to the office. Mm. So what you find out now is that because you see a lot of lance corporals coming out and said, this government is treating them not well, Mr. Buratai needs to go, they quickly rejig. After that one died down, another person comes out and said, we are just, we are just fighting your new war. They say, okay, let us reject. Why have we, do we still have this set of people? They've done their best. When we have the eye, step, eye, uh, uh, the, the eye incursion of Boko Haram in the country, they stem the tide down, they chase them back to the, to the woods. But now we need to change strategy. But, but we are not considering help us that. Better the economy is going down. We're not considering how, 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 that. This is, how much this is costing us, especially our image uh, outside of the country. The entire, the, entire, the entire presidency is now shifted to Magu. Our economy is in, is in conundrum, the health is not there, the poverty level keeps increasing, but everything is now Magu. And you'll be shocked. After Magu, is going to go to CCB. After CCB, is going to go to Bosil Bola Ahmed Tinubu. After Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Obaseki. So our government has a way of ensuring that they always make us to forget what are the issues. The economic is crying. The security is nothing to write home about. People are dying every day. For example, they said the whole of Nigeria has only done less than a 200,000 tests for COVID in a country of about 200 million. Whereas a, a, a country like South Africa is doing about 500 tests in 24 hours. I mean, in, in, in one hour. And yet we have a country of 200 million that we cannot even do up to 10,000 tests in a day. And yet the presidency is shouting about Magu, the economy is there, security is there. Tell me what is working in this country at the moment. Tell me one thing. Is it Magu's problem? If Magu has truly stolen, let them bring it out to the public. You, he's right. a public officer. You don't need to try him in the secret. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Salami will allow this government to ride on his, uh, his personality or his integrity to justify what is not justiciable. Let them try Magu in the public. Give us what the petitions are. Are All they right. petitions? Are they from the ghost? Let us know what are the issues. All right. And then um, Magu is putting up, the right direction. He's putting up his defense today. Uh, we get to see so much unfold. They will as remove the him. Day, we know what that's the, the target. Unfolds. Remove him and bring another person in. And that let, person let, let's, after see, two years, let's see the, the, the development him. that comes up. Uh, Abani Akinwale, thank you so much My for pleasure. your time.